Hey everybody, Movie Review Next Door here, and I'm back with another review. And this time it's a bit of a triple threat, because I'm going to try to go through three OVAs, because I've never done an anime review. I never realized that I hadn't done an anime review. I don't think I have. But this time I am reviewing Kite, Mezzoforte, and Kite Liberator. And if you are aware of these, Kite and Mezzoforte have a bit of a weird thing about them. And I will acknowledge that. But yeah, I'll be reviewing Kite from 1998, Mezzoforte from 2000 to 2001, and Kite Liberator from 2008. All three under an hour long OVAs. I guess I'll start with Kite, directed by Yasuomi Umetsu. Um, the action crime genre. The summary Sawa may seem innocent and naive, but don't be fooled. She's a cold blooded killer, and if you're on the wrong side of the law, you may be her next target. Not content to just watch as the imperfect justice system lets more and more criminals go loose every day, a detective decides to train the young Sawa to be his instrument of justice. So, what do I think of Kite? Well, I don't think it's um fantastic or anything. It's definitely imperfect. It's definitely got some weird story bits that I will get to. But overall... If you can get past certain things, it's fun. Um, the thing is, I'm pretty sure, I'm not 100% sure on this, but I think this was meant to set up a series, like a TV series, or at least an OVA series. But it never really took off until later when people started realizing, oh, this exists, and then they were like, oh, that was fun. That There have been movies that have been, like the style of action they chose has been like, kind of comparable to Mets or to Kite. And I can see why. Kite has a very interesting style that it's animated in where it's kind of realistic y but also kind of um kind of jaggedy at times. But then the animation the animation for like normal dialogue scenes might look a little bit like low budget, I guess. But the animation during the action scenes is where this these OVAs really shine, all three of them. Even though I will get to Kite Liberator and some disappointing elements about it. But Kite has some really standout action scenes. There's the, the main one that comes to mind is in the bathroom, where she, she's basically kicking the guy's asses. And then she sets off a, a, an explosion, and then it shoots her out the window... And then she's hanging on the bar with the one guy holding onto her leg. They fall, and a bunch of shit happens. I don't want to s spoil it for y'all. But then I have to get to one of the weird things about the first two of these. The director, Yasuomi Umetsu, the way he got funding for these, allegedly, was if he added in sex scenes... Or scenes that made these qualify as hentai, which is pornographic Japanese animation, then he could get funding. So you are not missing any plot if you see these scenes. I've seen them before. To be honest, they do nothing for me. I don't really find like like animation like that to be very, you know. I don't find that to be very sexy, especially in this, because the main character, Sawa, is supposed to be 17. This happens all the time in Japanese, like, hentai, but, um, yeah. So I'm better without, even in this edited version, there are bits of nudity which are very unneeded, so that is something I can detract from the film, or from this OVA. Because it is very unnecessary, it's not needed. Um, like, you can just have a line of dialogue being like, oh yeah, Oberi, like uses her for sexual stuff. And there's a whole plot about her parents being murdered and all that, and her getting revenge against the guy who killed her parents. 
which I do think that that would work better in something that's a bit longer because this OVA is 40, 45 minutes without the sex scenes and about 50 ish minutes with. So I think that this does suffer from being this short of an OVA. And I, I do think that that can detract from certain people's enjoyment. The fact that the plot isn't exactly like fully fleshed out. Um, and it is, the plot in this is kind of a mess. It does kind of go from like action scene to action scene or action scene to dialogue scene to action scene. It, it, it is a bit overstuffed. There's enough action in this film for like three different action movies. So, um, yeah, I'd say that's one of the big cons is that it's just not as fully fleshed out as it should be. But otherwise, I do think that this is an enjoyable anime to watch. Um, again, if you can get past the censored versions still, um, or edited versions still, like, showing nudity at small points, then I think you'll be good. And yeah, I think it is worth watching. And now to the next one. Oh, I didn't show the poster for frickin' Kite. Because half of the frickin' posters almost show nudity, so I have to show, like, one that doesn't. But, um, right there. Kite. The post... Oh, yeah. Now that we're at a massive forte. There you go. Next one is... Mezzo Forte. Again... This is from 2000 to 2001. The summary is, The target of hit girl Mikura is a wealthy baseball team owner, but he turns out to be a powerful underworld boss. Mikura and her team are beset by countless heavily armed bodyguards and the boss's vicious daughter. What did I think of Mezzo Forte? Well, I, I think it's a big improvement on Kite. Because even though it's not a lot longer than Kite, it fleshes out the story a lot better. And while I do think that it's still not long enough for the story it's trying to tell, which I think for the story, um, certain scenes of like like story and shit could have been added in, and it would have like, you know, uh, first of all, paced out a bit better because. These first two are kind these first two OVAs are kind of packed to the brim a bit too much, kinda like certain action movies that keep going and going and going and having a bit too much action. This does something that Kite couldn't do for me, which was, you know, have a bit more of a cohesive narrative and a bit more payoff when the ending comes because Kite does have what would be a satisfying ending for a feature film but given that it's only like 45 minutes long it doesn't really feel earned here the ending does feel a bit more earned the animation is a bit smoother you get a bit more of a light-hearted tone instead of the really like dark and depressing tone that Kite seemed to have for the most part like it would go from dark and depressing scene to oh, crazy action scene, it didn't really fit. Like, even though that's, that the biggest action scene in Kite is a lot of fun, it does kind of come out of left field and doesn't really fit with the rest of the, the tone of the rest of the OVA. With this, it's constant goofy action with a goofy tone. It never really gets too dark. Again, Mezzo Forte is another one that they had to put in you know, animated sex scenes. But at least here, the character is supposed to be of age. Um, doesn't mean it's any more enjoyable. Again, I've seen both versions of these. I prefer the edited version because I don't really, again, I don't really find the sex scenes attractive. And Again, I, I think for the most part, this is just trying to be kind of a showcase for what's to come. This did turn into an animated series. I've got this poster for it right here. 
Metsu DSA, which I'd love to give a look because it's not too long. It's it's about 13 episodes, which, yeah, I can deal with that. Um, and yeah, I'd, I'd love to give it a watch because I found this to be quite a blast. It's 50 minutes or I'd say about 55 minutes without the sex scenes um, of just a really fun detective action crime story with some dark comedy elements, which was nice. I mean, you don't have the exploding bullets like in Kite, which, what you gonna do? You don't have the crazy over-the-top action scene in the city, but what you do have is a lot of fun, like, acrobatic stuff. You get some, again, you get gunfights. There's a really, there's some really nice gunfights in this, very well animated, some really nice um, hand-to-hand -hand or, like, acrobatic stuff, and yeah, I, I'd say this film, the way this film does the action compared to Kite is kind of more, well, I mean, this is better paced. I, I, while the second half of the OVA doesn't have near, doesn't have as much action, it still has a pretty decently compelling narrative. And you can see what this show, what what this is trying to be like. Oh yeah, look forward to the show. The show will expand on certain plot points, like the char the main character getting psychic visions of things, um, certain characters talking about other characters that we haven't met yet. Um, and yeah, I mean, this is an enjoyable. Oh yay! There's not a lot to say about all three of these, which is why I kind of did a bulk video here because they were all like less than an hour. And yeah, I mean, I I I feel like I'd it'd be kind of repetitive to sh do three videos of this, but yeah, it's it's a fun. Uh, well, if I could say the highlight of it, I'd say the the um fight scene in the or the entire bowling alley scene. I loved. It was a lot of fun. There was some tension. There was some very interesting fight choreography. I say choreography. It's animated. But with animation, you can do whatever. And if you were to turn any of these shorts into live-action movies, or any of these OVAs, the first two, Kite or this, into a feature film with a decent narrative, I'd love that. Like, with a decent thread. Because... This an action is very impressive. From what I hear, the live-action adaptation that starred India Isley and Callan McAuliffe, I think his name is, and Samuel Jackson that was made in, like, South, South Africa, from what I've heard, that's not a great movie. Apparently, it's not well-made, really. But, um... I still want to give it a look, at least for completion's sake, and Metsu DSA. But, but yeah, I, I think that this could make a fun movie, or a fun, like, live-action series, maybe. Because, I'm, I mean, I'm tired of seeing, like, Cowboy Bebop and One Piece getting live-action adaptations, and I'm like, One Piece has, like, over a thousand episodes now. How are you going to condense the story of One Piece into 12 episodes? But what do I know? But yeah, I I do recommend it. Um, I had to find it on Internet Archive because it's kind of hard to find the edited version of this uh, other than on, like, DVD. And, um, yeah. And that goes on to our last subject of the video, which is... Let me change the lights again. There you go. Kite Liberator. Kind of a bland poster, but gets the point across. Uh, Kite Liberator came out in 2008, directed by, again, by Yasuo Miyometsu. In the summary, years after the events that transpired in Kite, Sawa's whereabouts are a mystery. During this time, rumors of a new killer have begun to circulate the city. They call her the Angel of Death, an unfeeling assassin who eliminates her targets with grace and precision, leaving only a flurry of feathers as her calling card. 
What the public is unaware of is the fact that this notorious hitman is a polite young lady named Monica. Like her spiritual predecessor, Monica has lost most of her family, and her father's duty as an astronaut keeps him practically worlds apart. However, they are close despite the physical distances, and Arodo promised his daughter that he would return. Till then, daily life for the timid and somewhat clumsy Monica involves mostly school and her part-time job as a waitress, but her nature completely changes once she receives an assignment. Now, what did I think of Kite Liberator? Well, I remember enjoying this a lot more when I was younger, but I will say there are some things that are a bit off about this plot-wise and just overall with certain plot threads. But yeah, it, I mean, I still think it's decent, but it but it is a letdown. Um But it, it kind of lacks something that Kite had. Even though I don't love Kite, I like Kite. It lacks that kind of down and dirty feel that it had to the action and the story. And it does feel a bit... I guess not super clean, because there are gory parts to it. But overall, it does feel like a bit of a disappointment, a bit of a letdown. Um... It's not that the acting is terrible. It's not. I watched all three of these three English dubs. I watched this English dub on um No, I watched I watched it on like 9 anime or something cuz the version on Tubi was the sub. I was watching old friends, so um but yeah, like I I don't hate this OVA. It it just does come off as a bit of a letdown. And the two best things I can say about it are that the animation is really nice. Really, really, really nice. And the um, the score. It's kind of a... Uh, oh, excuse me. It's a bit of a departure from the first film score, or for first OVA. I keep saying film. From the first OVA score... The first OVA score was a bit jazzier, um, and this one is a bit more kind of, I guess, techno poppy, or kind of, um, you know, kind of hard to explain. But yeah, it just something felt kind of off with this. The whole addition of the well, the the weirdest thing that the plot does is this whole main plot of the space station and the space food that turns the astronauts like it makes it turns their skin basically into bone and they become these like monsters that are unrecognizable and lose all sense of thought so they're just killing machines and i will say that didn't fit with the rest of the plot like at all and it just kind of felt yeah it kind of felt just out of place because the first two OVAs don't f like Kite and Mezzo Forte didn't really have a lot of sci fi elements. Somebody I watched it with said that it kind of had a cyberpunk vibe, and I I can only see that in Kite really. It, it just seems like kind of an alternate history thing or just a bit of fantasy because there's the whole thing about the sex robots in Mezzo Forte, which doesn't really amount to much other than, like, a reveal at the end. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I'd say I didn't, I didn't mind watching Kite Liberator again, because the animation, again, is very nice to watch. There are some really weird plot points in this, though. I will say, I don't know... Apparently the director was forced to put in the sex scenes in the first two, but in this one, there aren't any sex scenes in Kite Liberator, but there's some really unnecessary nudity that uh, of the main character who's supposed to be underage. Now, she's supposed to be 17, and still I was like, that you didn't need that. It's kind of gross, and I understand there's not an actual actor there, and the actual actress, like, voicing her is not 17, but it still feels very gross, um... There's a part where this male cop who's kind of um, um, 
a supporting character kind of just asks her out and he's implied to be around like 28 or 29 which is a big fucking red flag i don't understand why this character monica needed to be 17 or underage at all it it just kind of feels creepy and i hope the director didn't choose that i hope that was just like some weird translation thing because it, it it does come off as really gross but other than that it's 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 watchable it's not got nearly as much action as the fur as mezzo forte or um kite the original but it's still watchable there's entertaining bits the ending fight i will say is very very anticlimactic there isn't a, there aren't a lot of action scenes there's a couple shootouts that are very short they're well animated yeah and some of the, but some of the like sound effects are off or some of the bits of animation are off and it i don't know it just kind of felt a little rushed together at times and yeah i wasn't bored but I, I will say it did let me down. The writing did really take a dip in the second half where they just didn't know what to do. And this ends horribly. Like, it ends as if it's going to have, like, a second part, but it doesn't. And that pisses me off with a lot of OVAs. But, yeah. If there's any that I would say tr say to watch, it's Kite and Mezzo Forte. If you like Kite enough, maybe you'll enjoy Kite Liberator, but yeah those were my reviews of kite kite liberator and mezzo forte if you've seen these let me know in the comments what you thought um and uh move your rear next door